Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, May 26. On this date in 1968, Patrick Kenny was born. The former NWA Tag Team Champion and ECW superstar known as Simon Diamond turns 44 today. On this date in 1979, Ashley Massaro was born. The former winner of the 2005 WWE Divas Search turns 33 today. On this date in 1996, WWE held its In Your House Beware of Dog pay-per-view. In the main event, Shawn Michaels fought the British Bulldog to a no contest. The majority of the pay-per-view wasn't seen by the home audience because a severe thunderstorm knocked out power to the arena as well as the pay-per-view feed. The event was rebroadcast two days later as In Your House, Beware of Dog 2. This has been Today in Wrestling History, May 26. Hi, this is Jim Cornette, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry on 1490 WBCB. Thank you so much, Jim Cornette. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Had the fortune a few years back to uh, have a bit of a chat with Jim Cornette, and uh, it almost felt like amateur comedy hour, and I was the uh, the audience. Uh, again, me being as green as green can be, Jim Cornette saw right through that, and he kind of knew, well, he had that, that mindset that a, a sucker's born every minute, and that apparently was my minute when I had the opportunity to interview him back in April of 2009. Not one of my brighter moments, but... Uh, Rather, a rather fun interview nonetheless, just going back and forth with uh, the Louisville slugger himself, James E. Cornette. 1490 WBCB, welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly, and I, I am esteemed and honored to have one of the greatest in all of sports, well, sports entertainment oh, as well. Oh. Out. Come ahead, go, go on and say <laughs> the greatest of all time. That's what you want to say. I can see it bubbling off your lips right now. You want to say the greatest of all time, Jim Cornette, and I accept your compliment in the manner in which it was intended. I was going to hype you up even more. I was going to say he's a manager, an executive, even an American, an American spokesperson. Easy for I'm me to say. I'm a statesman, a gentleman, and a scholar. Well, don't and spread nasty all, rumors I, I around. I know all the words to the long version of American Pie, too, but that's nevertheless. All seven and a half minutes of it, huh? Or actually eight minutes and change. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> we are at Sinomania. Is this not fantastic? Every wrestling celebrity in the history of the world on the planet Earth has been here today, and I have had a ball. I have too, and this it's certainly a treat talking to you. It's uh, I'm throwing off my game here a little bit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of greatness. <laughs> this is the greatest pro wrestling show on the air, WBCB, 1490 AM. It, it without a doubt is the greatest pro wrestling show available on the radio airwaves today. And I want to say this, you have the perfect face for radio. I say that with all sincerity. Thank you, Jim. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, well, how are things, I guess the first thing to ask is how are things going with TNA? I know we haven't seen you on camera as much lately. I know it's been mostly uh, executive shareholder uh, Mick Foley, but now that he's the TNA champion, do you think we'll be seeing more of you on camera? Oh, well, I think, you know, I, I pop up whenever, uh, I'm kind of like underdog. When criminals in this world appear and break the laws that they should fear and frighten those who see and near, hear the cry goes out from far and near for Jim Cornette. Because TNA management cannot exist without Jim Cornette, but now TNA is doing great. Mick Foley, the executive shareholder, Jeff Jarrett's the founder, but I, as to quote Ric Flair, am the st straw that stirs the drink in TNA wrestling. At this point, I think I could use a drink or two. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you look like you've been drinking since early this morning, man. That's just my opinion. But no, TNA wrestling is doing fantastic, and you know, for the folks here in not only the Philadelphia area, but of course Levittown, Trenton, all over the area, it's a wrestling capital, a wrestling hotbed has been for. 50 years now and uh, lockdown was a tremendous event here in Philly and there's going to be bigger bigger and better things to come from TNA live and on pay-per-view and you can watch Spike TV Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time which we are on currently and see the greatest action in all of professional wrestling. Absolutely and I'm looking forward to it in fact uh, I got the chance to see lockdown live and I was thoroughly impressed uh, most notably as uh, the crowd pretty much had shown with the tag title match, Team 3D, as well as uh, Beer Money. What were your thoughts on that? Well, you know, Team 3D, the hometown guys, you know, and, and, and they wanted to come back to Philadelphia and prove a point that they are the preeminent tag team in all of professional wrestling. I think they did that. Beer Money gave them a hell of a struggle. Robert Roode and James Storm are a couple of guys that they've only got a brighter future in store. They've really come along the past couple of years, so Beer Money's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But on that night, 
in this town, in this location, in public, if you will, as Dusty used to say, Team 3D gave the hometown fans what they came for, and that was a win. I'll certainly drink to that, no pun intended, with beer money. <laughs> Hand me another barkeep, no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, these, don't, don't try to swerve these people around. This is radio. They can't see. They'll think we're in some den of iniquity, some place of sin and alcohol being thrown around. There is no sin here. There is only goodness. goodness no, it's a high school, of milk, course. Milk being drunk. No, yes, absolutely. Speaking I'll have drunk, another. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I uh, want to talk a little bit about your website, actually, because I got a chance Please to do. check that out. JimCornette.com. That's C O R N E T T E, JimCornette.com. Absolutely, and uh, I got a chance to check out your uh, commentary from there, and wow is all I can say. Uh, uh, certainly some poignant views, something that we don't normally see uh, you know, anybody speak their mind in wrestling, and uh, you, you are certainly the person to do it, and uh, in a way I want to say thank you for that because well, we don't get a whole lot of that. I appreciate that. You know, it's a brand new website, just came up last week, and I've been planning it for some time. A lot of people have said, Jim Cornette, get on the Internet. So I've finally done it and done it with a vengeance. I want to make an impact. And Cornette's commentary is a place where you can ask me questions. Uh, it's also the greatest restaurant review column, uh, Now with Tomato, which is co-written with my lovely wife, Stacy, who's not paying a bit of attention to me. And, uh, and also uh, some of the greatest wrestling collectibles for sale out of my vast personal collection, which I'm trying to wheedle down. Uh, this year because uh, I've run out of living space in my home, so it's now time to share some of my 40 years of collecting wrestling items with the public. So JimCornette.com, if you want to read, if you want to look, if you want to buy, it's all there for you. Absolutely, and uh, I guess without that living space, it's why you're on the road as much as you are with TNA, I'd imagine. That's exactly, I can't get in the house. You know, I have to step outside to change my mind. I mean, there's no room. I tell you, it's, it's almost as bad. You know, the hotel I stayed in last night, it was so small, they stole my towels. Did you realize that? Well, you couldn't whip a cat in that room without getting fur in your mouth. But anyway, I just want to say, all the folks, be sure to listen to WBCB, 1490 AM, Pro Wrestling This Week, is it? Pro Wrestling, pro wrestling, Weekly. Pro wrestling Weekly. I'm sorry, I'm uh, having Joe Petticino flashbacks. Pro Wrestling Weekly, the greatest pro wrestling show on the air. And I would like to say, of all the wrestling radio shows that I've ever been interviewed by, this is certainly the most recent. Absolutely. Jim Cornette, an absolute pleasure here. Oh, wow, I can't keep my composure here on uh, 1490 WBCB. Thanks again. You've been an absolute treat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Certainly never a loss for words, James E. Cornette. And, uh, well, things have certainly changed a little bit since that interview occurred a little over three years ago. Of course, Jim Cornette heavily involved in Ring of Honor, based here in Philadelphia, but certainly doing a little bit of traveling on the road as well. Nothing but the best for Jim Cornette. And, of course, you can check out his website at www.jimcornette.com. Before we get back to one last interview here, let's take a look back, of course, to uh, Over the Limit this uh, past Sunday. A uh, couple of surprises thrown in there, of course. Uh, right before the pay-per-view started, there was uh, the introduction of a 20-man People Power Battle Royal where the winner gets his choice of either a United States or Intercontinental Championship match later in the show. And a returning Christian won the Battle Royal by last eliminating The Miz. It looked like he was going to challenge Santino Morella for the U.S. title. But in a surprise, out-of-nowhere face turn, Christian decides to go after the Intercontinental Championship held by Cody Rhodes. And would beat Cody to win the Intercontinental Championship in his return after being off for a few months from injury. Also in the pay-per-view, we had... Kofi Kingston and R-Truth beating Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger to retain the WWE Tag Team Championship. Layla beating Beth Phoenix to hold on to the Divas title. And in the middle of the pay-per-view, Sheamus retaining the World Heavyweight Championship, beating Alberto Del Rio, Randy Orton, and Chris Jericho. Of course, we had a, you got to figure that Brodus Clay is going to be in there somewhere. They seem to sneak him in to add to the card. Brodus Clay beating The Miz in a little over four minutes. I mentioned Christian beating Cody Rhodes to become the Intercontinental Champion. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan going for a little over 24 minutes. Punk retaining the WWE Championship. And then as kind of a come down from that, Ryback, another squash, just under two minutes beating Camacho to the interest of hardly anyone. And then in the main event, John Laurinaitis beating John Cena as pretty much... Everyone had figured, and 
a lot of the head scratching. Big Show, of course, getting involved and then stating on Raw that uh, the deal was apparently made to bring uh, Big Show back on Saturday, the day before the pay-per-view, which completely defies logic because one of the stipulations was any superstar who interfered would be terminated. So if Big Show was rehired on Saturday, he was technically a superstar as of the time of the match, which would mean he'd technically be fired again. But I don't know. I guess we're not supposed to be smart enough to figure that out. I'm not really sure. Anyway, now it's leading to a feud between John Cena and The Big Show, which is something that we saw three years ago. We seem to be kind of flashing back to 2009 all around, and at least I've got the interviews here, but that that's more of nostalgia as opposed to repeating history. That would be like if I got these guys back on and asked them the exact same questions. That's kind of what WWE is doing with this feud with John Cena and The Big Show. But on to something a little bit brighter. We're going to go back into the uh, the Hall of Fame credentials for uh, this last interview here. Uh, of course, from Sinomania this past September, the one, the only, the Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas, Mr. USA. 1490 WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. We are here at Sinomania with the Hall of Famer, the legend, Tony Atlas. Tony, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It feel good being here. Uh, a couple of quick questions. I mean, obviously you've had a, a very storied career. Uh, do you have a particular favorite match that you were in, anything of that nature? Well, all of my matches was uh, about the same. You know, it was just such an enjoyment to be involved in the world of professional wrestling. I was able to travel the whole world. I was able to meet a lot of great people and uh, wrestle against a lot of great athletes. So, it, it, you know, it's hard to, to put anything above anything else. It was all wonderful. Talk a little bit about your, uh, your, your latest run in the uh, WWE with the Abe Washington Show. What, 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 what was that experience like? Well, my best experience was, uh, I, I love the Abraham Washington Show, but my best experience was manager who is now the current, w, the, the current world heavyweight champion, Mark Henry, and traveling up and down the road where Mark Henry was absolutely fantastic. You know, I'm a pretty strong guy myself, but, you know, being around Mark Henry, nobody is strong. I see Mark Henry push buses. Being cast iron, frying pan, bench press over seven, eight hundred pounds in the gym. I mean, the, he, he was the most uh, tremendous uh, uh, athletes that, that I ever met in my life, and it it was a, it was a privilege for me to get to know the world's strongest man, Mark Hendry, and also Abraham Washington, who, who is a very ingenious young man. So my last experience with the WWE was was just like all the other, absolutely fabulous. Wow, I can imagine uh, yeah, giving give, whatever kind of advice you gave, it certainly worked, as now he's on a, a completely different track uh, and obviously now on top of things in the WWE. I see you have a, a book over here, uh, uh, Too Much Too yeah, Soon. Yeah, Tell yeah, us a little yeah, bit about that. I, I, this is my autobiography, Tony Atlas, Too Much Too Soon. And uh, what it does is uh, 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 tells my whole story from my childhood. It starts with... Uh, it shows all my accomplishments, the uh, titles that I have won. Uh, it talks about my childhood, talks about my mom, goes all the way up to uh, you know my whole career as a pro wrestler. George Scott, who is the guy that found and developed me. I was also trained by Larry Scott. I mean, uh, uh, Larry Sharp, a, a monster factor uh, here in Philly. And uh, it was just an absolutely, absolutely great story. Talk about my bodybuilding career. All the way up to the present time, I uh, talk about the death of Bruiser Brody and, and how he was uh, murdered in, in uh, Puerto Rico. I was a witness to the murder, and uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't make the trial because none of us knew about it. But it was one of the worst things that I've ever seen since I've been in this uh, business. we watching Bruiser Brody get stabbed to death in the uh, dressing room in Puerto Rico. So it's a horrendous story. So if people that want to get my book, they can go to crowbarpress.com. That's uh, crowbarpress.com, www.crowbarpress.com. And they could order the book for uh, 20 bucks and uh, read about my career and also uh, Bruiser Bruni and a lot of other uh, people. It talks about Muhammad Ali and my Arnold Schwarzenegger and a whole lot of other people that I have uh, been affiliated with uh, in the wrestling business. Wow, certainly an amazing story. Atlas, too much, too soon. Of course, you can get that at www.crowbarpress.com. 
And uh, one last quick question. Uh, obviously, uh, you and Mark Henry you both shared that uh, body, well, bodybuilding, weightlifting career as well as a wrestling career. Uh, did you prefer one over the other? Which which do you prefer? Uh, well, bodybuilding is good because it builds your body, keeps you in real good shape, but also like being strong. So I always like to do a crossbreed of powerlifting and bodybuilding uh, cabal because I felt that one without the other is, is no good. I see a lot of strong guys, but they don't have the physique to go with. I see a lot of guys with physique that don't have the strength. So in my training, in the training I put Mark Hindu through when I was his trainer, it's, it's for he to have both the physique. And if you notice, and when you look at Mark Hindu, you know, he's shaping up real good. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Hall of Famer, legend Tony Atlas. Uh, thank you so much for your time here at uh, Cinemania 7. Thank you, sir. The Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. I didn't think it would be right to get him to do that uh, laugh from the Abraham Washington show on there, but uh, it, it definitely was a classic to hear live. Uh, couldn't quite get a recording of it, but still a lot of fun to talk to nonetheless, and uh, nothing but the best for Tony Atlas. That's going to just about do it for me. Bill Melody is up next with the Country Music Hall. I'll be back live in studio next week to discuss developments for TNA Slammiversary coming up on the 10th, as well as WWE's No Way Out on the 17th. And something that uh, developed from the Facebook fan page, of course, if you check out WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly on Facebook, like the group, and you can certainly chime in on the wall there, and I'll read your Facebook feedback. We'll get to that more next week. But something that stemmed from a discussion a couple weeks ago, I want to look at next week, some of the most awkward moments in professional wrestling. This, of course, started from the discussion of the uh, Billy and Chuck gay wedding from back in 2002. Certainly an awkward moment for a lot of wrestling fans. So I kind of want to get your take. That was one example. I want to see what, what, what do you think is some of the more awkward moments in professional wrestling history. All that and more, this is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB, online at WBCB1490.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bill Melody in the Country Music Hall is up next.